What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today I have an install video for you on the 14 charger. Um, we're going to be installing the Lighting Trends uh, grill lighting kit and uh, this video is going to include, um, uh, it's going to be a total start to finish so um, it's going to include removing the front bumper, uh, installing the light strips, wiring them, and reinstalling the front bumper. Um, so less talking, let's get into it, but first a cold start. So this is a much faster um, and easier bumper to remove than the 15s and ups. Um, real simple, couple hand tools, bumper would be off in, in less than 10 minutes. Um, so a ratchet of some sort, uh, I always prefer the Milwaukee battery ratchets, um, but a hand ratchet will do the job just fine. Uh, some type of clip removal tool, whether it's something like this or a flathead will work. Um, a seven millimeter, maybe an extension, and a 10 millimeter. Those are the only tools required to remove the bumper. All right, now we'll start at the top of the bumper here first. And uh, we're gonna remove these two covers. You just pull right up, usually. Like that. Just got a couple clips, metal clips. Now you do have to take the right side off first since it goes over the top of the left one. Just like that. And once those covers are removed, there are four clips that you remove with your clip removal tool. And once these are all removed, that is it for the top of the bumper. Now we'll go ahead and move to the sides and remove the bumper from the fenders. And then we'll go along the bottom, remove the seven millimeters all along the bottom and it will be ready to come off. All right, so here we are in the side here. Um, I believe, so this, I had put this SRT front end on this RT. So, we have one clip and one 10, 10 millimeter bolt. Um, I believe if you have a standard RT, there's gonna be two clips and a 10 millimeter bolt. But nevertheless, um, remove the clips, remove the bolt, pull the bumper um, out of the fender stay and uh, do the same on the other side and then we'll go along the bottom. All right, so we're gonna take our clip removal tool Move the clip or clips, depending on what vehicle you have. Sort of bend the liner in a little bit just so you can get to the 10, mil 10 millimeter bolt that's right there. Sometimes you got to pull the bumper away from the liner just to get the line it out, just like that. Push it back a little bit, and then you can get in there and remove the 10 millimeter. That'll be the 10. And now the bumper is ready to come out of the bumper stay. And it should pop out extremely easy, just like that. And we will go around to the other side and do the exact same thing. All right, so here we are on the left side and it's going to be exactly identical to the right side. Go ahead and pull the bumper 
out of the stay on this side. Just like that. Now we'll move to the bottom. All right, so here we are along the bottom of the vehicle. Um, there's multiple seven millimeter screws that you unbolt. Um, there's one right here and you keep going down across the bumper and you'll see um, maybe eight of them. Um, I'll do a final count here in a second, but you're going to remove all those screws and the bumper is ready to pull off. All right, so as mentioned before, these are seven millimeters. So you can go ahead and remove them. Now, since this is an SRT front bumper, um, I am missing quite a few screws because to do the conversion totally properly, you got to replace shields, uh, fender liners, uh, under shields, things like that. Not necessary unless you are a true perfectionist. Um, but there's plenty of hardware holding it on. And actually, I believe there's only two screws holding this one on instead of the six or eight that are normally um, holding it on. So there's the two screws right there. All right, now once you have um, all the hardware um, removed, the bumper simply slides right off. And obviously if you have fog lights, you are going to want to unplug them. And the bumper is successfully removed. Alright guys, now the fun begins. Now we can start installing the lighting strips and all of the wiring. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and start running the wiring. Uh, because I'm not really sure where I'm going to put the light strips yet. Um, I still have to assess the front bumper uh, on my 21 charger. I have them going across the top and bottom of the rebar. And that, um, I think that's the best location on the 15 and ups uh, to get the most light up through the grill. Um, but I'm going to assess the bumper on the 14 and see if I can attach them inside the bumper to get uh, more light coming through that way. Um, but first, there's only one way to try that, and it's to get everything wired in and um, kind of mock up the light strips and see where you get the best light output. So we are going to do the hard part first, and we're going to get this stuff wired in. All right, guys. So this is an extremely simple system to wire in. So you have your wherever it went right here. So this is your Bluetooth controller right here. This is your, this is your power source, this guy right here. And it's an extremely simple system, simple positive, negative. So you have your positive line here with the inline fuse. So this is going to get plugged into positive power and then your negative. And you follow this guy to this guy right here. This guy plugs into your power source. And then you have your leads for all of your um, light strips. And then you do have a fifth wire. This fifth wire is a male end, I'm sorry, a female end, and that's going to get plugged into your Bluetooth controller right here, just like that. And then you have your um, your feeds for the light strips. So extremely simple system. It's going to take us no time to get this installed, and it's going to be an easy uh, install for you guys. Um, so these four extra feeds, these are all um, lines uh, for your light strips. So let's get this guy wired in. And also, um, I do want to make a huge point to get yourself some dielectric grease. Grease all of these plugs, okay? Um, these guys do corrode. Um, I've had it happen a lot of times. Just, I can't emphasize this enough. 
just use dielectric grease in here and you'll never have a problem. And also stay tuned because there's going to be a discount code for lighting trends in this video. So watch out for that. Now Dodge is so awesome about this. They give us a negative post and a positive post. So this is gonna be extremely simple to get power going to your lighting. Um, so step one here, we're gonna take our power source and we're going to go ahead and install the positive on this jump post right here. Now this is a 13 millimeter nut, so we're gonna loosen that. Actually, you're gonna take it completely off. And once the nut is removed, go ahead and take your positive feed. Remember, it's going to be the one with the inline fuse. And put that around the post. And go ahead and tighten the nut back up. We're not going to install the negative just yet. we get everything routed and hooked up we'll go ahead and install the negative doesn't need to be overkill and now we are ready to and we will tidy all this wiring up later on off camera probably since it's going to be all preference I'll show you how I'm going to do it um, but I'm not going to I'm not going to film that so next step is to take your uh, feed and plug it into your power source just like that now this one doesn't really require any dielectric grease because it does have that uh, rubber seal on it um, so this is actually going to be okay but you know what for good measure i'm going to go ahead and throw some in there so you can get dielectric grease at a local parts store and just a little bit of grease in there just about empty bit of grease that's all and go ahead and plug it in just like that and now we can unravel our extension wires for the lighting strips these are the ones that I cannot stress enough to dielectric grease because they are not weatherproof at all. So I like to just add some on the um, uh, male sides. I like to just really get, get down in there just like that. Go over the pins a little bit and go ahead and plug your leads in. Like to plug it in and pull it out and make sure that that got grease in there, which it did. So awesome. Plug it in. And you're going to do the same with your other leads. Um, I believe I'm going to start with two lighting strips for now. I'll probably add a third. Um, but we're going to start with two. And uh, I'm going to temporarily install them on the rebar and temporarily set the bumper on and see what the brightness looks like. And if it doesn't look bright enough, uh, if there's not enough light shining through, I'm going to see if it looks better with the light strips on the bumper and go from there. All right, guys. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is just take a little bit of tape and just sort of tape these strips in place so that we can do a trial run and see if there's good light shining through. <laughs> Go up the side kind of like that. Now you are able to trim these as well, so if they're too long for you, no worries, just cut it, trim the length. Alright, 
so that's the top one sort of mocked up. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the bottom. Once um, you've got everything mocked up, go ahead and install the negative terminal uh, on the negative post. And uh, when you do that, the lights generally are like default set to on for whatever reason. So uh, as soon as you install that, you'll get some sparks and the lights will light up. Um, that's totally normal. And uh, we go ahead and download the app. It's called Magic LED. It's going to be this one right here. Open it up. It'll connect to your Bluetooth. And this is your on off. Bam. There we go. We got some lights. Green, red, white. So, and, uh, you know, of course, we've got a color wheel. So, whatever color you want. And just a thousand, actually, not quite literally, but 200 modes. So, tons of different modes. Um... Really a neat app. So that's that. Um, so now that we confirmed everything works, we're gonna go ahead and test fit the bumper and uh, see um, where we can get the most light coming through. Go ahead and just set the bumper up here. Like that. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the front. All right, so there we have it. That actually looks awesome right there. Definitely some good light coming through. I think that's going to be uh, sufficient for um, for the vehicle and where they are placed. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. All right, guys, now let's get to installing these strips. So first things first, um, you're going to want to Take some sort of a wax and grease remover or alcohol, um, spray it on the surfaces where you're going to be sticking the light strip to, um, just so that you get maximum uh, adhesion and that it sticks well for you. So, I already did that, so I'm kind of just doing a final wipe of everywhere that I'm going to be sticking the light strips to. And I will show you exactly where and how I am going to put these guys. Okay, so we'll do the top first. So the top, uh, I'm going to go along the rebar here, and I'm going to go up the side of the air, um, the air ducts here. So it's kind of going to, it's going to go something like this. That's going to look really good. I'm going to start at this side first, so that way, um, actually, I'm going to start with the side with the plug first so that way if it's too long I can just trim it so we're gonna go ahead and, and remove the tape here and just start sticking it on You're just going to take a pair of side cutters like this, and it does have cut lines. You're just going to find your length and cut it right between each diode. Just like that. Easy as that. Push it down nice. And then I'll take a drill bit, 11 64ths. I'm going to drill a couple holes on each side of the um, light strip. And I'm going to install some zip ties just to hold it in place it is double-sided tape um, I haven't had a failure but I also use some reinforcements to just hold it in place 
take some small zip ties. Something like this will work just fine. Go ahead and put it through your holes. It just kind of secure the light in place so that it doesn't fall down. Probably put three on each side. I will finish that up later on, but just wanted to add that little tidbit of information. And as far as routing the wires, uh, the leads, I'm gonna show you exactly where I'm gonna put, put, pull them through. Better yet, um, I'm gonna actually go, go through, um, there's a little spot here where this wiring for the horn and the ambient temp sensor all run through. I'm actually gonna go um, parallel with that. Once we pull them through the back, we'll find them. There they are. And just pull them all the way through. Not all the way, but far enough through to leave you some slack in the front of the vehicle for wiring in your strips. Are you guys now back to the front here? Um, so go ahead and don't forget your dielectric grease. Same thing. Grease the male end. We'll pull the rest of the slack through in a little bit once I get the um, strip tidied up right in through here. And now for the bottom strip, we're really gonna just do the same exact thing. Okay, now for the bottom guys, it's gonna be virtually the same exact thing. Um, I'm going to go, I'm gonna start with the plug end. Start about, right about there. Go ahead and remove the adhesive backing. Just like that. And go ahead across the bottom of the rebar. And across the bottom of the under shield. We have this much strand, we might as well use it. It's pretty much just like that. That is exactly how I'm gonna route this. And of course, we're going to zip tie um, over here and over here to make sure that everything stays in place. And we are going to route our leads This guy down here, um, dielectric grease, and um, I'm actually going to use some tape as well since this is going to be much more exposed to the elements. All right, so go ahead and get your grease in there. Plug it in. And we will start drilling some holes for some zip ties. Boom, done. Now go ahead and finish zip tying anywhere you want to zip tie, and we will tidy up the wires, throw the bumper on, and that's gonna be it for this video. All right guys, so I just wanted to sort of uh, just share uh, how I have everything routed, and just go through a final walkthrough. So, 
Got a couple zip ties along the top here. Double sided tape along the bottom. And then a couple more zip ties along the other side here. And we'll go to the bottom. A couple zip ties. I do have one big zip tie going around um, the whole rebar. Of course, double sided tape. Coming down here, a couple more zip ties. I do uh, have the electrical tape on this connection down here since it is exposed to the elements. And a couple zip ties along the bottom of the, or I'm sorry, the top of the lower shield. And guys, that is pretty much it. Of course, we got the wiring for the lighting trends uh, zip tied to the factory harness. Nice clean look coming through the back. The bundle of wire and your controllers and whatnot. This is sort of messy. Uh, it's about as clean as I can make it. Uh, I got everything zip tied up nicely there. And that will do it for this installation, guys. Um, later on, I will take some videos of how it looks at night. Um, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, last thing, slap the bumper back on and you are good to go. Uh, so you can do this. This is extremely easy. A um, couple hand tools, about two, three hours of your time, and boom, you guys are done. We'll catch you on the next one. Oh,